Hey Measuring Hero, Jay here. Today we're back in the QEC in Michigan to talk about something that some customers have expressed some uh, difficulty trying to do, which is pass a gauge r and &R. So we brought Dylan in to help us have a deeper dive. Dylan, thanks for joining us, appreciate it. Absolutely. Uh, okay, so like I said, a lot of customers sometimes have a hard time getting in uh, to pass their gauge r and &R. Can you kind of give us some examples of maybe what to look for and how to solve it? Absolutely, yes. So when most customers contact us because they're failing a gauge r and they think one of two things. Either their machine isn't accurate enough, which normally isn't the case, um, or their program isn't good enough, which we have a lot of high-level programmers. So that's normally not the case either. Normally, if you're failing a gauge r and it's a big picture item. So something like fixturing, part handling, styli, environment, all of those are really simple things that we sometimes overlook and it causes sure. us to fail gauge r and &R. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, can we dive into each one of those? Of course, of course. I have stations set up, four different stations. They're all going to show us good and bad examples of how to pass a gauge r, &R. Perfect. What are we looking at here? All right, so here is a really important part of a gauge r, &R is fixturing, right? So every gauge r, &R is most likely going to require a fixture. Mm -hmm. What's important is that that fixture is repeatable. So on a chuck like this, we could use something like a chuck key, which is going to tighten the part. Um, the problem is each operator is going to tighten the part a little bit differently. There's no consistency to this. Sure. So operator sure. one might tighten it pretty light. Operator yeah. two might go a little bit heavy. Additionally, the same operator might not be consistent from part one to part two to part three. Yep. Um, so we can just make an easy move by switching this out to a torque wrench. You can set this to a known setting, and then we have consistency in how much we're tightening that part. Perfect. Seems so simple. Makes sense. Absolutely, it is. All right. Should we go to the next one? Of course. All right, Dylan, what are we looking at here? So really what you're looking at here is a really good setup. First off, we're on the Prismo Verity. Um, we're running a gauge r and &R, and you can see it's a very clean, organized environment. We're focusing on part handling here. So we want to focus on part cleanliness and part temperature. So you can see that we have our parts laid on a cart right next to the machine. So they're going to be in the same type of environment that we're measuring in. Mm -hmm. We don't want these parts on the concrete floor where it might be a little bit colder. And we don't want them out in the shipping dock where it might be five degrees colder because right. those, those parts kind of fight to acclimate as we're measuring them and that's inconsistent. How long do you want them acclimated? Normally we try and put them there the day before would be ideal. Most parts it's, you know, a couple of hours. It really depends on the material. Sure, sure. Um, and then more importantly, we've got these parts really clean and they're acclimated, we want to make sure we're using nice, good gloves to load the parts. That's really something that's overlooked because a lot of people think we're only touching this part for a quick second. How much heat could we really be letting off? How dirty could we make that part? And really, our hands have a lot of effects on especially thin-walled aluminum parts. So sure. gloves are essential to this. Got it, got it. So, I mean, keeping a part clean, keeping it temperature, temperature stable um, are just things to, basic things not to look, yes. look after. Right, perfect. What else we got? Uh, we'll move on to styli. All right, Jay, we're on the Owenspect 863 now, and we're really gonna look at using the right stylus here. So it's really not a, a very well-known fact, but the, the uh, typical Ruby stylus that we would use is actually not too good with aluminum parts. And the reason for that is there's components of this synthetic Ruby stylus that actually attracts the aluminum particles. So if we scan a part enough with this Ruby stylus, you'll notice a silver equator adding up around the, the outside of the Ruby. And the problem with that is, is now we've qualified the stylus to a, a known value, but now our stylus is theoretically growing, mm -hmm. right? So our numbers are gonna become less and less consistent. So you'll see on the Owen spec, we actually have a um, silicon nitride stylus. Okay. So that is going to measure the same way the Ruby stylus would, except it's not going to gather those particles like the, the Ruby would. Got it, so if I'm hearing you correctly, know your material and know what you're using to measure it uh, to help pass your gauge Definitely, armor. definitely. Awesome, thanks. You got one more for us? Yes, yep, we'll go over to the Prisma. All right. Well, Jay, we're at our final station. We're at a gauge r, r on a Prisma Ultra, and it's using the rotary table, which I don't know if you've ever done that. It adds a new element of fun to it. No, I like it when they spin there. Yeah. <laughs> so really, what my favorite part of a gauge r, r is, is right before you're ready to run, take a big step back and look at the big picture, everything around your machine that could affect your gauge r, &R. So really play a what-if scenario, like this large industrial okay, fan. Yep. What if somebody turned that on, like operator two turned that on during the middle of the run? That would add a new variable that operators one and three didn't have to deal with. Additionally, behind you, we have a huge high-low that's about to finish installing a CMM. If that was moved during the middle of the run as well, that's a new variable that adds vibration to your mm -hmm. run, and it's going to cause you to fail your gauge r, &R. So big picture items are really big for passing a gauge yep, r, &R. Yep. So if I'm hearing you correctly then, we want to make sure you don't just look at the machine in a vacuum, just understand how it's interacting with the environment around it is another strategy. Absolutely. Dylan, uh, thank you for taking the time to show all of this to us. Um, I definitely learned something. Uh, I appreciate that you, uh, you came out to show Anytime. us. Anytime, thank you very appreciate much. Appreciate it, yep. And with you, we hope you continue to stay safe and stay healthy. And uh, with that, We'll see you next Thursday.